Hi guys, this is your sister Carrie Ann in Jesus Christ. You know what I'm going to say, you can skip this. Wicked, filthy, demonic scammers still in the comment section pretending to be me using my face, my name, and um, begging for money and all of that, giving fake prophecies. It is not me. Brothers and sisters, please, whenever I make a comment, my name, sister Carrie Ann, it is in solid gray border. If it's not solid gray border and you see a sister carrying, it is not me. That's a wicked, demonic, filthy scam. You need to report and rebuke them. All right. So <laughs> I'm literally, I literally got out of my bed. Like the Lord spoke to my heart. And because I was saying, Father God, you know, I can do this video tomorrow and upload it and all of that. But the Lord was just, you know, he said to me, go and do this video. I will tell you what to say. Brothers and sisters, I had no idea. I had no idea what is going on in the Philippines with their prime minister. It's only when I was checking through the comment section and I'm saying and I'm saying to myself, hang on, more than one people are commenting, even though the video, the la the latest video that, that I've uploaded concerning um that the man-made pestilence, a.k.a. the monster shot, a.k.a. the plague syringe, will eventually come to a stop. And brothers and sisters in the comment section were commenting. A few of them are saying, Sister Karen, well, not Sister Karen, but they're saying, you know, in the Philippines, the prime minister or the president, whatever, he's basically saying, if you don't take the plague syringe, you're going to be thrown into prison. And that's when the Lord began to speak to my heart. Because something is desperately wrong. Brothers and sisters, let me first of all, I'm going to address the Philippines in a bit, okay? Because this message is for them. But let me just first of all, reiterate what I've always say. Anybody, if it's your mommy, your daddy, your wicked pastors, your wicked government, the whole lot of them, your families and your friends, any one of them come up, comes to you, and tell you that the plague syringe is of the Lord, that the Lord somehow has, you know, he doesn't mind if you take it. They are a liar. They are liars, brothers and sisters. There's too many evidence out there right in front of your eyes to let you know that the plague syringe is of the devil. It is demonic. It is wicked. This, the words, that I, I can't find the words to describe this thing. I mean, I was saying to somebody, you know, talking to one of my siblings and I said to them that I've never seen, uh, it's not even medication. I don't know what to call it. It's not, well, I do know what to call it really, but in layman's term, it's not even medication. But anyway, I've never seen a plague syringe that I despise so much. When I said I despise this thing, like literally despise it. To the point that it won't happen, but if the wicked leaders come and knock at my door and say, look, plague syringe or well, you're going back to Jamaica or we ship you to FEMA or whatever, whatever, send me back, put me in FEMA. But that thing is, I've made up my mind. Brothers and sisters, I'm dead serious. I've made up my mind. This girl, I've made up her mind. That plague syringe is not coming near me. It, like, yeah. So, please, be vigilant, be sober. That is the word I want to use. Be sober, recognize and know that the plague syringe is not of the Messiah. Yeah, too many red flags. And I've outlined some, some of them. The money incentives. Take the plague syringe and we'll give you money. Krispy Kreme giving away millions of donuts to those who have taken the plague syringe. Some pastors, you cannot go to church unless you get the plague syringe. In India, they're going to switch your cell off, right, for those who do not take the plague syringe. And now in the Philippines, the guy, the, the head, the leader, he is saying, if you don't take the plague syringe, we're going to throw you into prison. You're telling me that this, is, this thing is of the most high, yeah? That the, that the Most High Yah would put so much stipulation in place for you to get a plague syringe. This is not of the Lord. And those wicked pastors, I'm sorry. If, you're, if it's your pastor 
who is telling you and encouraging you to get the plague syringe, they are demonic. They've got the spirit of Satan. They are no different from the wicked government. It's the same spirit, brothers and sisters. Don't think that, oh, it's a different spirit working with the government, telling people to take the plague syringe. And then the pastor is another different spirit. It's the same wicked lying spirit that's working through these people. You've got to wake up. You cannot trust your pastor. You cannot trust your government. The only person you can trust is Yah, is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The biblical Jesus Christ. All right, let me talk to my beautiful brothers and sisters in the Philippines. First of all, we are praying for you. Hallelujah. I've released a video. I released a video about, I don't know, a couple hours ago. It's going to, you know, today, the 23rd, I released a video. And basically praising the Lord, you know, by saying he is. He is going to put a halt. He will put a dramatic stop to the plague syringe. He will. Hallelujah. He will. So I know that your leader is threatening you, right? In the Philippines, that if you don't take the man-made pestilence jab, a.k.a. the plague syringe, aka the monster shot aka the death shot aka the scorpion bite all right and it's got loads of you know it's got loads of names but i can't call the proper name you know because obviously you you will shut me down but i know that you know he is telling you that and he's threatening you with fear but for those of you who are born again for those of you who know your Messiah, who know your Lord, you need to stand. This is a test run. It is a test run. It is a test run for the three, for the mark of the three sixes. But don't give in, Philippines. Do not give in to this, um, sorry, threat. The Lord sees you. The Lord sees hears your cry he hear your prayer the, the, the bible says that the fervent cry of the righteous avail it much the lord knows your hearts now i want to show you something brothers and sisters because the enemy is really at work if you notice and caribbean you're next okay and even africa but if you notice how the wicked is working the way so they go to these poor countries, these, you know, people who can't help themselves. So like, for instance, in India, where they said, look, if you don't take the plague syringe, <laughs> you're not going to have a phone. Why they don't use that same um, command in America or in Britain or in France? Why they don't use that same command and say to the Americans, if you don't take the plague syringe, we're going to switch your, your phone off. Or come in Britain and let, you know, the Prime Minister say, if you don't take the plague syringe, your phone is going. Why do they not do it? Why do they have to go to the ethnic minority countries? Because they know that in Babylon, in these Gentile countries, there are too much laws at the moment that is governing people. But in the poorer country like Indian and all and, and coming to the Philippines, they can get away with certain things because the people won't fight. Because when you're poor like that, you don't have that um, backative behind you. All right. And so that's the reason why they're cheeky enough in India. Is it India, Pakistan? Well, well, I think it's Pakistan. I'm sorry. Well, it's, you know, never... yeah, it's Pakistan. I'm sorry. And um, so that's why they're cheeky enough to declare in Pakistan, look, you don't want to play a syringe, we're going to switch your SIM off. We're going to switch your phone off. And you see, the people are not really fighting back because of the level of poverty. Now they've gone to the Philippines. So you see the pattern. You see how they're moving around. The, they call them the ethnic minority groups. So they're moving around. So now they've gone into the Philippines, all right? And now they're saying to the Philippines, look, if you don't take this thing, you're going to go to jail. And I guarantee you, they're going to go to the Caribbean. 
with something similar. But you see, they're not going into the gen. Like I said, they're not going into the Gentile nations at the moment with with this rubbish, because they know that there's too much laws and courts and people just yeah. But in the poorer countries, they're like guinea pigs. This is serious. But we fear not. We don't have any fear against them who send threats. Why? Because we serve a mighty, a powerful, heavenly father who will stand up for his people. Hallelujah. And I don't know. I mean, I've had a lot of contact. A lot of contact with the with Filipinos, with Philippines, with Filipino people. A lot of contact over the years. And brothers and sisters, I don't know if you have contact with Philippines, if you've got Filipino friends and all of that. They are one of the most gentle. <laughs> God Almighty. They are one of the most gentle, loving, calm people, right? That as a nation I've come across it is truth it is truth brothers and sisters and it really really breaks my heart knowing that they have that nature that it's not soft it's, well is it soft nature yeah it's a gentle nature the Filipinas have a gentle nature nature and yes I'm going to mention it and yes I will mention it but there are Hebrew Israelites in the Philippines because yes, 12 scattered tribes are all over the place. Yes, the light skin and all of that. And they've got the straight hair and what have you. I'm not saying all of them are Hebrew Israelites. Please don't get me wrong. Because not all of them are. But some are definitely, definitely Hebrew. Definitely, definitely Hebrew Israelites. So don't watch the skin color people. I know a lot of people always watch the skin color and all of that. But don't watch that. It's the bloodline we're dealing with. But... It really breaks my heart that this leader, the leader of the country, is threatening those people like that. It is not fair. And so therefore, I see in the realm of the spirit, yes, Lord, thank you. I see in the realm of the spirit in Philippine war, warring angels, warring angels. These are warriors that the Most High Yah has sent out over the Philippines. Now, there is wickedness in every country. Some countries are more wicked than others. And this is, it is a truth. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to mention any country. All right. <laughs> but some countries are the killing capital of the world. I'm not mentioning. Yeah. All right. But. um, So there's wickedness. You might say, oh, well, in the Philippines, they're wicked. Well, they may be wicked. But, you know, how wicked are they? <laughs> you know, how wicked of uh, these people so i'm not co really concentrating on the wickedness or anything like that so you can't say oh the lord is punishing them for the plague syringe the lord operates differently his judgment comes differently but i know the sweet beautiful heart of those filipinos that i come across you know and especially and, espe and especially those who say Christ. Oh, yeah. I am telling you, brothers and sisters, these people are so nice. Their heart is the, the spirit that they carry. And it looks like all of them of the same nature. It is truth because, all right, I'm a Jamaican, right? I'm a Jamaican. And if I'm not careful, I, you know, if I'm not careful, people tend to want to lump me in the characteristic of all Jamaicans, because Jamaicans have a very strong personality. This personality is very, very strong, just like the Nigerians. You know, you know when you come across a Nigerian, you know a Nigerian when you come across one, because their personality is very, very strong. And they, it's like they all have the same spirit. And the same thing goes for the Jamaicans as well, and the Caribbean, and the African-Americans. You know, they have that... You know, and even the Caucasian, the, the everybody, all nation carries the same spirit. Obviously, when it comes to Christ, then if it's a bad spirit, then they have to break off, you know, because 
the renewing of your mind over culture any day. But it's truth for the Philippines. It's like they all carry the same spirit. It's very gentle. It's a beautiful, sweet spirit that they have. And like I said, it really breaks my heart that this wicked leader is, is threatening them like that. But I believe and I know that Yah is going to stand up for them. Because I see in the spirit warring, warrior, warrior angels assigned to the country. So we're praying for you, Philippines, Filipinos. Um, stay strong in the Lord, especially those of you who know your Savior. Who know your Messiah. Please do not buckle underneath the, underneath the pressure. And what come in my heart as well. I should have found the scripture. I'm really really sorry. I'm going to wrap up now. Because I need to get this video out tonight. Um, but what came in my spirit. As I heard about the throwing into jail business. There's a part in Revelation. Is it Revelation 3 verse 10? Let me go to Revelation 3. I don't think it is. But let's go to Revelation 3 verse 10. Where Jesus... Is it three? Where was it? Um, Revelation three. Then the basket. I think it's somewhere here. Thank you, Lord. Um, oh, watch this. <laughs> watch this, because my Bible has subheading, but it says the church in Philadelphia. The church in Philippi in in the Philippines. All right. I know. I know it doesn't say Philippines, but. You know, I'm just using this as an analogy. The church in Philippine. Let, let's, let me just quickly read this. All right, let me just quickly read this. Okay. Um, I want to look for the scripture, the part where the Lord says, you will be thrown into jail for 10 days, but be though of good courage. I'm sure it's in Revelation 3. But if it's not, please forgive me. Um, okay, I'm going to... Um, Okay, all right, let me just read from verse 7. So this is Revelation chapter 3 and verse 7. I don't know why I'm reading this, but I'm going by the Holy Spirit, all right? Revelation 3 verse 7. And to the angel of the church of the... Uh, uh, and to the angel of the... And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, all right? To the angel of the church in Philadelphia, said Philippines, all right? These things said, said he that is holy... And that is true. He that has the key of David, he that hopeth and no man shutteth. This is the Lord speaking. All right. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door. Hallelujah. Father God, give me this scripture. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door. And no man can shut it, for though as a little strength, and has kept my word, and has not denied my name. The Lord, honestly, I'm doing this video, brothers and sisters, but it's the most high Yah that brought me to the scripture. It just came in my head, Revelation 3 verse 10, but the Lord said just read from verse 7. This is powerful. This is powerful. Verse 9. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship at thy feet and to know I have loved thee. Behold, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation which cometh upon the earth, which cometh, which come upon all the world to try them and dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly, hold fast, which thou hast. The, can I can't read. Sorry, I'm so sorry, brothers and sisters. Behold, I come quickly, hold, hold that fast, which thou hast, that no man take thy crown him that overcometh will i make a pillar in the temple of my god and he shall go no more out and i will write upon him the name of my god and the name of the city 
of my God. Hallelujah. Which is the new Jerusalem. Which cometh down out of heaven from my God. And I will write upon him my new name. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit say unto the churches. I know this here is talking about really the last days. It's really to do with the mark of the beast when it rolls in. But equally, it can go for the plague syringe. So we're saying to you, uh, our brothers and sisters in the Philippines, hold fast to Christ because he will deliver you. I really was looking for that, that verse that says that he will be thrown into jail for 10 days. That's what I was looking for. But anyways, it's still a powerful passage. Um, Revelation 3. All right. Revelation 3 um, is still a very, very powerful passage. But brothers and sisters, I am telling you, the enemy is just all out with this man-made pestilence jab. You know, the day when the wicked leaders come up and say, look, we're putting a stop to this. I'm... T you oh. <laughs> I will be celebrating, but it's going to be short-lived because after the man-made pestilence job, they're going to roll out the, the, the three sixes. They're going to replace it with something, but the Lord is going to give us a little time space, all right? And I will do a video on that. I don't want to talk too much on that, what you should do when that time space comes, when they come up and they said, oh, we're going to stop the plague syringe for whatever reason. Um. We're going to have a short window to make up your mind whether you want to stay in Babylon, whether you want to move out to the country areas. Because what is coming next, you cannot pray it away. You will have to leave your fams and friends and go hide in the bushes. That's how serious it is, brothers and sisters, the three sixes that is coming. All right? Because these people are done for. Once they take the mark, they're done for. So be of good courage, my beautiful Filipino brothers and sisters in the Lord, stay strong. Be encouraged. Do not deny the name of your God. This is what Revelation 3, you need to read that for yourself. Read it for yourself. Revelation 3 is for you, honestly. Because it's the, it's the most high, yeah, that has really, really put that scripture. I wasn't even going to read any biblical scripture. I wasn't. Like... I was just going to come and do this. But the Lord said, do the video. I will tell you what to say. And I was obedient. But the part that says, watch this Philippines. The part that says, this is Revelation 3 verse 8. This is what the Lord want you to take away. This is your encouragement. Listen. I know thy works, Philippines. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee. An open door. So even though your wicked leader is threatening you to throw you into jail, the Lord is saying he's set before you an open door. You cannot see it right now, but it is but it is there. Amen. I've set before you an open door, and no man can shut it. What a grace. Nobody can shut that door that the Messiah opens right for thou has a little strength of course you're gonna feel weak of course you're gonna wonder and ponder and panic you know government come and knock at my door and say oh you're not taking the plague it's either the plague syringe or we're gonna put you in jail of course you're gonna feel anxious it's natural and the lord is saying you have a little strength he knows he knows the human side is kicking in but watch this watch this for thou has a little strength and has kept my word and has not denied my name. As I said, I know that this here is really for the mark of the beast. There's three sixes to roll out. But we can put this to the plague syringe. Don't take the plague syringe. If they throw you in jail, they throw you in jail. Don't take it. Be strong. The Lord will come through for you. We're going to hear good testimony out of the Philippines. And that um, leader that has made that um, that wicked... It's, it reminds me of um, Nebuchadnezzar. This, this, this leader of the Philippines. I can't remember. What's, what's his name? 
dirty or something like that what's what's his name dirt do, do, do god forgive me please uh, what's his name door 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 dirt dirty <laughs> sorry dirty is it dirty it's not dirt d e u d e u dirty dirty isn't it just dirty is it dirty whatever his name is but that man that dirty man all right um it reminds me of Nebuchadnezzar. You remember when Nebuchadnezzar gave out the order and he made a golden image and said to the people, look, if you don't worship me, you're going to be thrown into the lake of fire. And obviously Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego said, hey, you can throw me in. I ain't going to bow down to no statue because we know our God. So you've got to say to dirty, you know, throw me in jail. If, if so be it. It's a test run. All right, Philippines, but you are loved. You are loved, your spirit, you've got a beautiful spirit, especially those in Christ. You know, if you're going to have a friend, have a good Filipino friend because they're so lovely. Very, very nice people. All right, so be bold, be strong, be courageous. Walk with Yah, just like Enoch. All praises, all beautiful praises to the Messiah who lives above the heavens. Yah eternally bless you. I love you all and I will see you soon, someday in glory, in Jesus Christ's precious holy name. Amen and amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, I'm, 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 I'm going to say the benediction in a bit, but I'm, I'm smiling to myself because I'm thinking, I'm thinking about that guy, that Filipino guy, the, the president, prime minister. I know I said his, his name is Dirty, but I hope I pronounce, I don't think it's Dirty, Dirty, Dirty. It's bugging me because I know people are going to say, oh, Sister Karen, his, his name is not dirty. Well, he's acting dirty, isn't he? Really? With what he's doing to the Filipinos. He's acting really dirty. So it's a fitting name. I'm not changing. It's fitting. Let's say the benediction together, brothers and sisters. It's Jude chapter 1. Jude chapter 1, verses 24 to 25. All right? 24 to 25. The Bible reads... If, you know, if you've got your Bible, you can say it with me. If you don't know it, if you don't have your Bible, you know out of your head, you can also say it. And you will also learn this by heart in due course. Okay, Jude chapter 1, verses 24 to 25, the Bible reads, Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty dominion and power both now and forevermore amen and amen amen blessings amen